Hey y'all, and welcome to the first episode of my brand new podcast, Door to Deceit. I'm your host, Ash, and I'm so glad you decided to tune in. Since it's episode one, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm Black, a Virgo, and a two-time college grad with a BS in criminal justice. Um, I've been engulfed in true crime my entire life, and I'm so excited to take a deeper dive into the perplexing case of Stephen Heinrichson. This story is absolutely haunting, and it's a reminder that you never truly know a person. So strap in as we unravel the details, twists, and turns that make this case so intriguing. Our story begins in Adelaide, Australia, lovely name, with Stephen Hendrickson, a 63-year-old man who at the time of his murder was wheelchair-bound after recovering from surgery. Like, 63 and in a wheelchair. Who does that? Like, oh, people are so nasty. Um, I couldn't find that much information on Stephen before his death, but it seems like he lived a full life. Um, he had at least one major relationship before encountering Tanya because he has a child, a daughter. His sister said of him, he was a very easy, laid back sort of person, very good natured, and he loved kids. Like, oh, that's just so nasty. Why would you take, like, mm, not you taking out a person like that? It's always the good people that get it though. His daughter, Lisa, um, who was in labor, actually pregnant and in labor when she found out about her dad's death um she had this to say about her dad shock and sadness was never part of my birth plan but that's how it went my son and father now share the same day but for completely opposite reasons my father was my hero he always lifted me up and was always proud of me he was proud of all his children and grandchildren he loved us more than we ever knew that is so fucking sad Stephen met Tanya, she was a mother of three already, um, after his relationship with his daughter's mother. The couple eventually had three daughters together, him and Tanya. Um, Those daughters are teenagers now, um, so of course there's no information on them because they're minors. But the girls had this to say about the tragic situation. I'm embarrassed to know my mom. I want you to know that I'm disappointed and ashamed of you. They said in a joint statement, I cannot believe someone can be so cruel. Like, they ate down with that. Because, girl, that's crazy. Like, you murdered our father. Over a... Oh God, just, oof, just blows me, babes. Realistically, how did they get to this point is the question. Well, Miss Tanya, at 43 years old, decided murder was on the menu once she met Gavin Scott Skinner. Oh, not the name. A 46-year-old man from Christie's Downs. It's a place in Australia as well. Um, But again, not much information was available regarding how or when the couple began their affair. But during the investigation into Stephen's death, police found that Miss Tanya, a mother of six at this point, had actually asked her husband if Gavin, her side man could move into their home the motherfucking audacity like the actual audacity to ask your husband of several years because you have three children with him three teenage children with him so it's been at least 13 years with him and you ask your husband if your side dude can move in miss tanya got balls babes She has balls, like for real. The police also discovered text messages between the couple that seemed to be discussing the murder for hire plot. So it's just like dumb, 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 dumb. Why in the hell are you messaging someone on anything talking about a murder, let alone texting from your phone that is attached to your name, your address, your social security number? Tanya had balls, but she did not have brains the wrong B. Um, Moving back to the text though, a text from Gavin actually said, uh, from Gavin to Tanya, it actually said, I'm so ready to go on a hunting spree. She replied, if it's to do him, then I'll give you my permission. Like, how awful could this man have been? 
It just blows me. Blows me. The text also showed that Stephen was unfortunately assaulted by her wife's boyfriend multiple times before he was eventually killed by him. So my thing is this, was no one outside of that household seeing him? Or like, did the boyfriend only hit him in places where he could hide the bruises or what? Cause like, I'm asking this because why was no one reporting this for elderly abuse? At 60 fucking nine, like, girl, you cannot be popping up with bruises and all this kind of stuff and no explanation for it. So I'm just, I'm confused. It just doesn't make sense to me. Like, I know for me personally, one of my biggest fears that I have as my parents get older is getting them a nurse or something and the nurse abusing them. And I personally don't recognize it. So, I mean, I definitely feel for Steven's daughters if they were, you know, around and didn't recognize that their father was being abused. I feel for them. I feel like they might end up having a little bit of guilt about that, that they didn't report it or they didn't call the cops or they didn't whatever. So I definitely feel for them on that. That, oof, that would fuck me up. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Um, I mean, I'm not shocked that they didn't report it, obviously, because if they did see anything, I'm not shocked they didn't report it, their children. Um, and of course you wouldn't think that your mom is a fucking weirdo <laughs> who would get your father killed or have your father killed. But unfortunately, you know, here we are. The plan to murder Steven appears to have began after he refused to let Gavin move in. Um, so I guess... You don't want to let my side man move in? Cool. You gotta go. Crazy, but okay. The two lovebirds, Tanya and Gavin, just could not be apart, and they planned to X Steven out since he wouldn't let Gavin in. The plan was to drug and then stab Steven to death within his own home so they could get married. Imagine marrying someone and you think they love you and they care about you. You've spent all these years with them. You've had three children with them, and this is what they're doing behind your back. Like, I'm single right now and it makes me look at dating so differently because how do I know if you're nuts? Like, <laughs> how in the world do I know if you're nuts or not before I get invested? Like, girl, questions that need answers. They need a test for this. Like, they have COVID testing. I need y'all to have crazy testing, girl, because this is nuts. Sorry, <laughs> a little tangent, but back to the case. Um, Tanya, you know, I'm just gonna call them TNG, girl. TNG decided to choose December 15th of 2018 as the, as the day, and based on the investigation and the following trial, Stephen was found stabbed to death with high levels of prescription pain meds in his body. It was definitely enough to sedate him, and so not only was he in a wheelchair, 69 years old, recovering from a surgery, but he also was sedated before he was murdered. So hopefully it wasn't as bad on him because the sedation kind of helped a bit with that. I really pray that's the case, but yeah. This is where it gets a little graphic. I'll give a trigger warning before it gets real crazy, but yeah, this is, yeah. This this man, Gavin, was not a nice man. Steven was found dead in his home after one of the murderers called in a welfare check on him. That's insane. For you to call in on your own murder, you're literally you're an imposter you self-reported that is just it's gross it just blows me like this really just blows my mind it's almost impossible to believe unfortunately steven ended up with at least 70 stab slash and blunt force injuries so not only was he stabbing and slashing him he was also beating him the police searched for days for the murder weapon it was a 40 centimeter long bowie hunting knife However, during the investigation, they instead found two different gloves and a dark colored jacket. These are all things that they were looking for, so they happened upon them luckily enough during the investigation. During the trial, the prosecution's case centered on the text messages shared between T and G and their motive of wanting to be together and get married, despite Tanya's marriage status. Gavin also had an accomplice, a 47-year-old man named Robert John Thrupp. And crazily enough, <laughs> Crazy enough, even with all the evidence, all three of them pled not guilty. They ended up having a Supreme Court trial, all three of them, um, I believe separate ones, with 14 person juries that heard every freaking gruesome detail of this frenzied, awful attack against this defenseless older man. So this is where the trigger warning comes in because it, yeah. 
Prosecutor Carmen Mateo recounts a part of Stephen's scalp was cut from his head and found on the floor beside his body. His body was found in an unnatural position with up to 70 stab wounds to his head, chest, and back with significant blood stains on the floor, walls, and furniture. So in my mind, this is like a scene from Saw. Just wow. There's actually a part in, I think, the latest Saw movie where a guy has to cut a part of his own brain out. I kind of imagine it to be like that, but worse because this is a murder. This is an attack. He was left with a smashed photograph of himself on top of his bleeding, mangled body. It's just, that's so gross to think about that not only did you come into his home, you hunched his wife, you disrespected him, you beat him several times before this, now you attack him in his home and smash a photo of himself on top of his body. It's just the ultimate disrespect. You would think that he had done something to Gavin in order for Gavin to behave this way and he had done nothing at all. But love his wife. It's really sad. Like this man was totally dependent on Tanya. And her story, while all of this was going on, was that she was asleep. You didn't hear anything because you were asleep. Girl, anyway. The court ended up hearing about Stephen's forced drugging and sedation with the prescription pain medication Tramadol. They also heard about the psychological abuse Tanya put Stephen through. She and Gavin were open about their relationship. So they never hit it. Just so bold, so brazen. Tanya would refer to the younger man as her future husband. She also wore his engagement ring. Tanya would even tell Stephen that she wanted to leave him to be with Gavin. And I don't know why she didn't. But, you know, people always look for the... I don't know why people always think murder is the easiest way out. Like, that blows me. You have to do so much work in order to try to get away with a murder. Why wouldn't you just leave the person? (laughs) leaving them is so much easier even though you have to do like you know divorce court and blah 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 girl that's not easier for you than murdering someone period like what that is so crazy to me (laughs) but anywho as you can probably guess okay all three of them were found guilty as they should be and sentenced accordingly So Tanya was convicted of conspiring to commit murder and she was sentenced to 22 years without parole. Gavin, who actually committed the attack, surprisingly only got two freaking years more than her. Girl, what? Like, personally, in my opinion, 22 and 24 years, not enough. You ended someone's life. I don't care if he was 69. I don't care if he was already sick. I don't care if he didn't have that much longer to live. You don't know that. You're not a fucking psychic. You deserve life period 22 and 24 years is not enough i show you come on girl get it together i don't like that so gavin got 24 years and robert his accomplice which i never really was able to find out what he did they just always called him the accomplice so maybe he was the getaway driver or something um or he i don't know gave him the knife or something i don't know because he was only found guilty of manslaughter so he got seven years justice sophie david said tanya had become resentful to stephen and saw him as an obstruction to her relationship with gavin justice david also said that she could accept that tanya was not present at the time of the killing and did not anticipate the level of violence but it was her who spearheaded the murder plot so she has to pay the cost during the trial she actually chastised tanya And she said, your offending and conduct in intentionally encouraging Gavin to murder the deceased was an egregious abuse of your husband's trust. You were his wife and you were his carer. You knew that he loved and trusted you. He was a vulnerable man, incapacitated and confined to a wheelchair. Yet you encouraged another to murder him for your own selfish purposes. It is difficult to comprehend your motivation to commit this offense. It was open to you to simply leave your husband. Like, girl, literally, sister. Justice David also had to give Gavin a little one too as well. She said, you inflicted a brutal attack on a vulnerable man for your own selfish purposes. This was nothing less than a frenzied attack. It was completely unjustified and gratuitous which girl period but no shade they probably don't know what those words mean because they didn't have the brain enough to just say hmm let's just divorce him and go on with our lives together 
like he's 69 girl even if you did have to put up with him as like your partner he's 69 girl how much can he do like as an old ass man like it's no shade how much can he do girl like you didn't have to do that to him you did not have to do that to him at all in a crazy turn of events, Tanya, in October of 2023, so this year, a couple months ago, she actually won a retrial on appeal as a court overturned her previous conviction. Tanya's defense challenged her conviction on the basis that she was not physically present at the scene of her husband being killed. So she was wrongly found guilty of participating in the murder. And I mean, that was the grounds that they use and Funnily enough, she got it. She also argued that there was insufficient evidence to support the claim that she gave house keys to Stephen's house to Gavin and Robert as there was no forced entry into the home. The justices that overturned the conviction stated, we have taken into account not only the fact that the prosecutor's submission invoked language redolent of a consciousness of guilt, but also the fact that its prominence was unfortunately enhanced by the emotive terms in which it was made. So in layman's terms, she was awarded a retrial based on the tone of the language used by the prosecutor in their submission to the jury. Basically, the tone they used um, was essentially accusatory and it could have possibly swayed the opinion of the jurors. So lucky for Miss Tanya, her conviction got set aside and she's prepping for, you know, a new trial. And the date for that is unknown. I mean, I can't lie, I'm shocked as hell that they let this lady out with that flimsy excuse. Like, yes, you were upstairs, so technically you shouldn't have been charged for the murder, but let's say your friend goes in and robs a store and you're sitting in the car with him. You also get charged with that crime of robbing that store. If someone is shot in the process of that crime, you now get charged with that murder too. So because she set it up, I'm sorry, I don't think that you should get a free retrial simply because you weren't there baby you set it up and we know you did allegedly girl allegedly 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 not too much <laughs> but in my opinion allegedly okay she knew about it and she set it up if not there's far too many coincidences with the text messages about hunting steven and then for her excuse to be sleeping like girl please who corroborated the fact that she was asleep the sand man like girl the tooth fairy like I i'm santa <laughs> like somebody has to have seen her when she was sleeping and when she was awake girl mm -mm. I don't know to me it just seems crazy but y'all let me know what y'all think do you think that Tanya deserved a new trial or was this a misstep in justice I want to thank y'all so much for listening and I hope you enjoyed like this is my first time doing anything like this for real for real so I'm really excited but um I'm out of here I will see y'all next time and hey, do not forget to lock that door behind me. You never know what could come crawling in. <laughs>